Hip-hop since 1987.com Terrell Thomas, Hip Hop since 1987. We're live right now, Dallas, Texas, XMG Studios. And I'm with multi platinum recording producer. He's been doing some things out in Dallas and beyond for a long time. Goes by the name of Mr. Lee. How you feeling today, sir? Doing good. I can't complain at all. I can't complain at all. Now, I'm originally from the Philadelphia area, but I love music from all over the place. So it's dope to actually be in the presence of a gentleman who's been making a lot of history here in the South for some time. A lot of folks who aren't in Texas, in the Texas area, understand the sound in Texas and the music movement here in right. Texas. Talk to me a little bit about the movement and how you've seen it grow since you've been a producer. I mean, you know, when you, uh, a person like me getting started in the, in the business and that being able to work with a person like Scarface is like the most intriguing thing that can ever happen, you know what I mean? So... The start was Faze, look at Lil' Kiki, Slim Thug, Paul Wall, Mike Jones, and everybody else just started carrying the movement in the 90s all the way through the 2000s when, when the tipping started hitting and Paul Records started hitting, Slim started hitting, everybody getting these deals. You know, it was really, uh, it really just put the eye on, on Houston as a whole and the, the hustle that we got and how we, you know, maintain and make our money, you know what I mean? So we, uh, we was always able to captivate our crowds in our hometown before we went out abroad. Now, you just mentioned some power players in the game, not just here in Texas, not in Dallas and Houston, right. but in the game, period. So how did you come about working with the work, working with the likes of the little Kikis, the Scarface? Were those cats who heard just sound and came to you, or were you out pitching some of your music and actually building relationships with them? I mean, we network. You know, I was doing a lot of stuff with Rap A Lot then. I started working with Switch House with T-Fast, and that's when me and Kiki got really, really close, and I was doing a lot of stuff before that with Slim Thug and his whole team. You know, I was like their go-to producer. You know what I'm saying? So... We kind of politicked and we met it at, at, in the middle with terms and just started working. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, okay, Lee got the sound, let me just do this. It was some shit that we actually put together and we cultivated and made it into a sound. How did you become, or where, where did your love for production begin? Was it something that began as a youth and you playing instruments? Is it something that came later in life? When did you actually become, uh, decide to take being a producer on full time? And when did your love for music and production begin? I really been doing the music shit since I was nine, you know what I'm saying? But probably like when I got out of high school, I started taking it really, really serious. I was, I was in a little rap group called Four Deep in uh, Louisiana, you know what I'm saying? We was in there trying to do our thing. It was comical now that I look back on it, but <laughs> that was the shit that really got me started and really put my made me have the hunger to go at after what I wanted, you know what I'm saying? What was the first singer you produced for one of the major players that you that you just mentioned when you said, okay, I got something here and I can really make a name in these history books? Uh, I'd have to be Pussy We Not Called the Fifth World Boys. Hmm. Yeah, that was that was one of my first biggest records and <laughs> one of the most influential records of my time, really, for me. Yeah. So we see, of course, we see the different instruments, the different tools and the programs. Talk to me about some of the instruments you do use, some of your favorite programs and plugins. I use Logic. And I use a lot of native instruments, mostly like the Contact 5, but m mostly just Logic. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? MPC I use for my drums and shit like that, and that's something that I've been working with since the mid-'90s. You know what I'm saying? And I just got a bunch of shit from my partner, June James. He just put me on a bunch of game with some shit, so I'm kind of scatterbrained right now trying to figure this shit out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I approach my shit like a band. You know what I'm saying? When a band set up, they play different music and different type of tunes and different fields of shit with the same instruments. I do that shit. You know what I mean? I got my, mm -hmm. my records and my music have a DNA on them. When you hear my shit, it's not like, okay, it's the same track that I've heard over and over again. It's a different feel, but it's the same instrumentation shit in there. So, you know, people hear that and it's like, yeah, that's, that's Lee for sure. I hear the Argus in there. I hear the Pejated Rhodes in there. When they hear that shit, they know that's me. When any other niggas do that shit, when you do the pegiated roads and I'm hearing this sliding on the organ shit, man, just, you know, just say, you know, hey, Mr. Lee influenced me on my shit because that's, that's part of my DNA, really. Now, you've worked with a lot of legends, as we keep mentioning, in, in, in Texas and beyond. But I, something that was intriguing to me when I saw, I was like, okay, he's doing the Scarface, he's doing Lil Kiki's, the Bum Bees. Then I saw Nipsey Hussle, you know. Yeah. So, like, how did that relationship form? And who are some of the newer artists that you've worked with or look forward to working with? The Nipsey Hussle shit came off, off of a record that I did with Lil Kiki called Gotta Be a G. Nip remade it and shot a video to it. And I got one of my partners that used to manage me in New York, Lee, Lee uh, Resnick, introduced me 
to Nipsey Hussle. And that's when we started. I've been knowing Nip since 2007. I've okay. been pretty much on this marathon with him <laughs> for 11 years, you know what I'm saying? And it's a real proud moment just to see the record coming out and doing what it's doing and, you know, seeing the Blue Laces 2 having the impact that it's having. But not only that, just to be able to work with niggas like Mike and Keys, Rance, 1500, all them niggas. Man, there's some super talented people on there. Josh from Houston. You know, it's, it's just a lot of talent on there, and I'm just – able to be a part of that is, is a big deal to me so being here in in the texas area your guys you guys sound is extremely unique top and screw movement and different things so is it a, a different creative process when you're creating a beat like what is your typical creative process when you go into production mode it just depends on who i'm working with you know what i mean it's like i'm like an artist with a canvas every picture is not going to be the same every process is not going to be the same it just really depends on who i'm working with i can do new york hip-hop shit I could do down south shit. I can do some West Coast shit. I could do some gospel sounding shit. I can do some pop shit. It just really depends on who I'm working with. That's that's the difference in between a person that make beats and a person that produce records. I produce records. Very well said, sir. Very well said. Is or uh, I don't know for sure. So you may be, you may school me in this area. Commercial scores are those something that you have uh, already in your catalog or something that you look forward to doing in the future? I got a lot of commercial stuff already done. You know, my music is spread all over the country and all over the world. You know, surprisingly, I've been hit by a lot of people outside of the country, all in France and, and Australia. You know what I mean? And I, I discovered Iggy Zaya when she was in mm. Australia. You know what I'm saying? So this is just different shit like that. I've been experiencing that all the time. But I really, I'm really just trying to get my team to get a team together and just keep doing what I'm doing and keep, you know, extending my legacy. I got a school I'm getting ready to open up so I can... Mm kind of extend my legacy that way and have people that can come out of my school with the knowledge and the gift to do the music the same way I do it or better. What type of school? Will it, will it be a production school, music overall? It's going to be a music school, music production, engineering, and business. We're going to give them all the formats and the platforms that they would need to be successful in the business because I think it's very important that everybody know how to make money, not just me. You know what I mean? I've been in this shit 22 years, so I've taken it like, okay, I've been doing this shit for 22 years, and I'm just going to sit back and watch shit be done the wrong way until it's accepted as the right way, or can I teach people that want to learn this shit so that we can keep our culture intact? You know, I feel like I am one of the people that's one of the gatekeepers in this shit, and if I don't teach people from my mistakes and teach them the things that they need to know, then it's going to be a devastating situation because a lot of people are not getting any publishing money off of this. They don't own their masters. They don't even know what that shit mean. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I know what it mean. So I feel like I'd be doing a grave just if I don't teach people what they need to know. Yeah, I think that's one of the dopest things I ever heard, quite honestly, good yeah. brother. Will, will it be here in Dallas? It's or in this building, right? Oh, here. it'll be right here? Yeah, okay. I have the second floor. I have this building, this studio down here in the, in the bank vault. And I have the second floor upstairs where we have the school and uh, we have Platinum Music Complex has a live venue where you can do live music competitions and stuff like that. I'm teaming up with our standard. We're getting ready to do some stuff here. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a big deal, man. Now you just gave you mentioned something that I wanted to highlight as well. The bank vault. We're sitting. I, I had the ability shout out to LT to actually go on the tour of the studio. Yeah. And he's let me know. That, you know, you're sitting inside of a bank, yeah, vault. We're in a bank vault. Was that strategic, or how did you come about having a studio in a bank vault? Man, it was God's plan. I didn't plan it. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I walked into this situation. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's symbolic to me because it's a lot of money coming out of here. You know, what I mean, I feel like these <laughs> these tracks are like bonds for me. You know, what I mean, I make the motherfuckers and trade them out. You know what I'm saying? That's how I get my bread. So I'm looking at this shit. Okay, I'm in the safe cooking up this bread, and I'm getting ready to go out here and ship it out and get my bread my money on. You know what I'm saying? So it's symbolic to me. I think everything happened for a reason, man. I'm 45 years old. I'm in this motherfucker like I'm a teenager right now. You know what I'm saying? So I love this shit. I got the hunger for it, and I just, you know, just keep doing it. Working with so many legends and being a legend yourself, are there any young artists or young producers who you see coming up right now that you just kind of smile and be like, yeah, they might have the formula, you know, and they really understand what's going on? Yeah, I see people like June James. It's a cat from Houston named Beto, a good friend of mine. He's dope. He's a prodigy of Pimp C. I mean, it's, man, it's a lot of motherfuckers out here, bro. That's, that's super crazy talented. You got S1 from Dallas that's super dope, that's been doing shit, getting plaques all over the place. His son... Vaughn, you know what I mean? He's dope. It's a lot of dope, dope people out here. Track Sounds from Houston. 
it just it's just too many to really name, man. It's just a big, big melting pot of talent in Texas, period. Looking at where you are today from versus where you're coming from, if you could talk to yourself 21 years ago, I know you say you've been in the game for 22 years. If you could talk to yourself 21 years ago, what would you say to yourself to kind of give advice to young producers today? Man, make sure you save the money. That's number one. Make sure that you retain ownership of your shit. You know what I mean? Even if you got to give it up at first, make sure that you are making the negotiations to get it back. Make sure that you know what your publishing is. When you, if if it's an artist that's selling two copies, I don't give a shit if it's only stacking ten cent. That's ten cents to a check. Make sure that you own your shit. Know all the legal terms of every single thing that you are doing in this business because you can't do business if you don't know business. Very well said, good brother. Very well said. As the year two thousand and eighteen continues, what else can we expect from Mr. Lee? What you got coming up in the works? Uh, I got. I'm working on a new album with Nip. He's working on a new album right now. I'm uh, getting ready to shoot out some shit to Davies. I've been working on it for a couple of weeks before I send it out. I got another big artist that I can't disclose who okay. it is. <laughs> you don't want me to say nothing on the on the internet or none of that shit, but I'm getting ready to work with this super legendary cat okay. right now. I've been working on LL Cool J shit for about three, four years. It's like some Nipsey Hustle shit, some real super crazy dope shit that the niggas just ain't dropped yet. And, you know, just uh, I'm really just trying to prepare myself to get into that seat, man. I want to be an executive and be, you know, be a, a person that's up on a ladder higher that, got, that I can be a much influ influential gatekeeper of the shit that I've been laboring on for the last two decades. Much love, man. For our viewers who aren't familiar and those who are, why don't you let them know where they can stay in tune with what you have going on via social media? Yeah, I'm on uh, Instagram, Mr. Lee713. Twitter is Mr. Lee713. Facebook is Producer Mr. Lee. And I have a new social app that I'm helping back in right now. It's called UpLive. You can go to your app stores, Android or iOS, and download it. It's called UpLive. Y'all need to check it out because this app is kind of like a... a kind of between like a snapchat and instagram together okay. and the only difference is the likes can turn to money so i really recommend that y'all go download up, that live. That. Up, up live up live yeah make sure y'all download that and check that out immediately following this interview terrell thomas hip-hop's 1987 an honor and a pleasure being down here at xmg studios dallas texas with the one and only mr lee stay tuned to hip-hop's 1987 we'll be bringing you a lot more from this brother